For those of you who have experience of working in childcare social, social work, you might uh, sort of recognise this in terms of if you're meeting people socially and you say, what do you do for a living? And you say, oh, I work in child protection. You get a certain look where they go, oh, that's a difficult job. Oh, how do, you, how do you sleep at night? You must be, you know, carrying those work worries at home with you. You must see some horrible sights, etc., etc. If you tell them that you work in childcare, they think you work in a crash. And you get a different kind of image and a different kind of perception of the work that you do. We all know that sometimes we work with very challenging situations, particularly those um, people that are known to marry the, you know, the domestic abuse and, and stuff like that. And there are challenges for social workers. And for that reason, because I, I, I live in East Patalbert and my daughter went to school in East Patalbert, we, we sort of made it uh, a point that if she was to um, be asked about what I did for a living, she would say, I would, uh, my dad works for the council. <laughs> she was also told that if I turned up at school, you know, she was to black me out. Now, being a teenage daughter, she was quite good at doing that in any case. <laughs> And then there's, there's this one occasion where she brought a new friend home to, to the house. Me and my partner were um, out of work at the time. And the friend looks at the photo and sees a, 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 a photo of myself. And she goes, I know him. You know him. Now, where do I know him from? What does he do for a job? And my daughter, on cue, said, he works for the council. Ah, that's where I know him from. He's a bin man. <laughs> Given the choice of being seen as the bin man or the child protection social worker when I visit the family for the first time, I'd rather be seen as the bin man. And the reason for that is for the, a triangle. Not any old triangle, but the Kaufman drama triangle. This has been around about 50 odd years now. And it talks about the kind of dynamics most of us will be familiar with in terms of team dynamic, sometimes you'll have somebody who will go into the victim role and other members of the team will then go to rescue them. Or sometimes you might be in a situation where you're um, challenging somebody about their behaviour and they go into the victim role and then suddenly you want to rescue them and pull them out of, of that situation. And I think it's a useful model to actually think of when we actually start calling ourselves child protection workers and whether that's actually a good thing to do. So if we use this model, I'm a child protection worker, so that must mean I am the child protector, and the person I'm protecting is the child. So who's the child being a victim of? Already we, we've created a dynamic there, where we're actually accusing the parents, where we, 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 we're working on that. Back to the triangle, I suppose if we were to ask the parents, they would have a different kind of view. They would see themselves as a protective parent, they might have their issues, they might have their difficulties, you know, I have to recognise that. But I love my child, I want to care for my child. So they're there to protect the child. And again, if we think back to Tina's case this morning with, with the mum and the video that you, you, you saw, I was mortified when I was, I was first contacted. I'm going to lose my kids. So already we, we're working with fear. And I think uh, Geraint, the, the headmaster, really put that quite succinctly this, this morning. But when we're under ch challenges and under pressure, quite often we, we resort to strategies that may not be helpful. And that might be, be even less than honest about things. Again, many of you, if you go to the doctor and they say, how much do you drink or how much do you smoke or how much do you eat? You probably would give a different answer to what the truth is. Nice but from the director, heads of service, principal officers, managers, always want us to know what the view of the child is. So if we used to go to back to the triangle and think about the, the child, I would argue that for many of the children, the drama triangle would mean that they would see themselves on hand to protect their parents. And quite often when we work in the families, we have to work through that kind of challenge because they are quite frightened about what could be happening. They may want 
the social worker to be supportive and help stop certain things that happen, but they don't want to be taken off their parents. They don't want their parents upset and distressed. They may love and have a very strong bond with their parents, but they may also want certain things to change. But I, I qualified just as the Children's Act was coming into, into being, and one of the criticisms that was about at that time was that while it was important that things needed to happen in a more timely manner, there was a, a real risk that we'd end up being process driven. So that it was more about the processes and more about the evidence that we do those types of things. 1993, there, there, there was a, a fascinating study that was done where they took social workers from all across Europe and they got them to visit each other, the, the different countries, and they sat in. So the English social worker, because I nearly fall off the stage, said, they didn't discuss evidence at all. I wonder what that says about their system. We spoke about it most of the time. And I wonder what that says about our system. Can social worker says, all this talk about evidence and proof, the child is suffering. Can't they see that? They also went on to make another important point. So, you know, one of the principles of the Children's Act is best interest of the child is paramount. And they said, in France, we, we say something similar, but we say best interest of the child is paramount in the context of the family. So you've been hearing a lot about the, the, the outcome focus approach today. And I think quite importantly, as you heard from Andrew Jarrett uh, earlier, is it's not a process, it's not a, a tool that we just deploy. It's actually a, a conceptual thinking. It's important that we think about our value systems, we think about our language, and we think about how we, we work with people. So if we go back to the, 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 the drama triangle, I would suggest that the outcome focus model actually gets us to think of us as being the support to a family, and we're the perpetrators, and maybe the issues about how to the parents maybe manage their frustrations. So that could be anger management, it could be the domestic abuse, it could be a whole range of things. How do they get support around their substance misuse? How do they get support around their mental health? Um, and also increasingly, because one of the things that also happens is we, we quite often have big issues within our societies that we try to deal with on a casework basis. And I think more and more we, we see in them, the evidence is coming forward all the time about how much poverty is starting to impact on our families. 68,000 kids in Wales are likely to go to bed hungry during the school holidays because they can't get free school meals. Is that a child protection thing or is that something about a community development thing? Is that something about how we, we approach uh, the, the work that we, we, we do? So for me, outcome focus is a good tool. Science and safety, I think, is actually a very good tool. But unless you actually have that conceptual thinking about how we, we, we work, we are really going to s struggle in terms of delivering our change. So three points that I want to, to, to finish on is we, we need to learn that the vast majority of our parents want to do the best for their kids. And we have to trust in that. And I think, I think you've heard that time and time and day, uh, 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 across the day. Well, and again, this is the whole inquiry actors thing, that it makes us think about things always from a, a severe child protection point of view, the Maria Colbert, the uh, Peter Donsons, etc, etc, etc. And there is this thing about the rule of optimism, that's almost, as soon as you start actually advocating that these parents have strength, or maybe you, you, you're getting maybe caught up in too much in the terms of the, the parents' abilities and stuff like that. But for me, that's something about a professional cynicism that has come into child protection over the last 20 odd years, and that doesn't really help that. And finally, I think it's important that we think about how we work to build engaging relationships, and that gets us past that issue of disguised compliance.